Hey, it's the Fact Freak and welcome. Right, on today's video, we are doing this actually live over Twitch. And if you're not following me over Twitch, my username is the Fact Freak over there as well. Please make sure to follow. We've got videos on there reacting to predator stings and going through files sent to me by a wrong one. Now, as part of that, we're going through a non molestation order filing between Adam Page, Princess Flu, and Stephen Loveday, aka Holly Stanley, Holly Oasis, convicted nonce. So we're going to go through this and we're just going to read through it and discuss it as we go. So I don't know, I'll probably not even save these in order because I'm a professional. As you guys know so here we go now this is a, a non mol order so a non molestation order has to be between somebody that has been in a relationship with somebody and that is another reason why i believe that princess flu and holly stanley did engage in a relationship um, this is another form of ID as well, um, a court document that has Stephen Loveday, the same date of birth and the same information that was used in 2015 when Loveday was convicted of being a, well, we know what, a wrong and doing horrible shit with kids. Um, Got to be careful what I say with this going over to YouTube. Anyway... So if we go down, obviously, this is important here. Now, this non-mol order is usually awarded without contest. So it basically means it's just given to somebody to protect them in the intern. Now, if somebody doesn't agree with a non-mol order, they can appeal it and go to court. Um, and this is basically what this is. So somebody's been notified that they are appealing and then Flu was given further evidence to support the non-mol order. Um, hey Ash, how's it going? Twitch is all new to you. Well, it should be good, man. It should be good. It, it's a way that I can do this sort of stuff live with everybody. Um, so, as it says here, the judge read the following signed witness statement of the applicant dated the 25th of July 2022 so this is this means the judge has read through this and this statement will have been done by either a court appointed solicitor or somebody of that nature so somebody's not, like flu didn't write it himself basically uh, the order was made at a hearing without notice of the respondent so that basically means like i said it's awarded without the respondent's knowledge uh, the respondent doesn't have to be there. The reason why the order was made without notice to the respondent was because the court was concerned that if the respondent had notice of the hearing, the applicant would be at further risk of harm or deterred from making this application. Which is usually the standard with non-mols. Non-mols are to protect people who might be in DV relationships, um, various things like that but you have to be in a relationship with that person you have to have been in one or currently in one um the court has made no findings of facts that means that they've listened to the statement from what they've heard it is enough to warrant this without it progressing any further unless it's appealed now, the respondent has the right to apply to the court to vary or discharge the order. Like I said to you, they can appeal it. Um, now, that's the first bit. Let's see what we've got on the next bit. Uh, right, okay. So, we're in here. We're in. We're kicking off. Right, so... Now, the statement will be Exhibit 1, of course, because it will be entered into court. Uh, the statement of Mr. Adam Page, as we know, that's that's already public information. That's already public information. And this is at the family court. Once again, relationships, non-mol orders. Non-mol orders become criminal when 
there's say like the judge may decide that off the basis of a non moll order that the respondent mustn't communicate with the person serving the order or they can be and or they will breach the order and be arrested and then it becomes criminal when that arrest is filed but this is family court this is you've got to have been part of a family unit relationship etc pardon me sorry so this obviously like the dates here the law act that's just when the act came into place for non malls in 1996 and of course the applicant so the person who has applied for the null mode order is princess flu adam page and it's been served to the respondent mr stephen loveday once again stephen loveday on a court document now this says this this is the first statement the way non mole works is if the loveday was going to appeal it loveday would make a counter statement with supporting evidence and then flu or page or whatever has a, has an opportunity to file another responding statement and then they have to take those and the evidence to court do, 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 do. right so like i say flu's got to have had this written by a, a solicitor called appointed solicitor anything like that i make this statement in support of my application for a non-molestation order made without notice to the respondent I have suffered verbal, emotional and physical abuse by the respondent, most recently on the 24th of July 2022. At around 10am, the respondent came outside of my home and was shouting, saying, come down and talk to me. Now, we looked at text messages earlier on in our previous stream where it seemed like there was a fallout between Flu and um, Holly through text messages and that was if i believe rightly that month july 5th fifth month these messages were saved well i believe am i right there june july yeah no no i'm wrong Anna. i'm wrong may may that's right um at around 10 a.m the respondent came outside my house and was shouting saying come down and talk to me I went downstairs and saw the respondent was throwing objects at my house aggressively. I am unaware what objects they were. However, it was making loud clonging, clanging sound. Me personally, I wouldn't have added that bit. You don't fucking need to, but whatever. The respondent also rang my buzzer several times. I told the respondent to go away and I ignored him. Then me messages on TikTok threatening you can say that we turn up to your house and we'll be visiting your mother soon the thing is with this if you're going to add something to this into a statement um and you can't then back it up so say holly says this is a lot of bollocks puts in their statement their evidence and then flu ignores this bit doesn't provide the evidence of what he's saying's happened it would make Holly's case stronger, if that makes sense, because it would look like it's bullshit. Uh, if you say you have messages, you better have them, basically. I felt threatened and was scared by the respondent's comment. Prior to this, on the morning of the 24th of July, 2022, the respondent held a live stream on TikTok where he announced my name and address and my mother's name without my consent and said go to the address once again if you're going to say that you need to have proof which if you know i mean spoiler alert guys flu was awarded this non-molestation order so i would suggest that flu did have proof of a lot of these things i'm oh, sorry right okay now this seems to have jumped to seven ten see if i've got these in the wrong order one second 
Yeah, I have. This one's next. All right. And of course, he was saying about the address, encouraging people to go to the address um, of, and to be fair, he hasn't done a really good job of hiding that. I know where Flew's address is, and that is the correct address. I believe the respondent was instructing third per parties to harass me. Um, one second, guys. I'll make me a little bit smaller here so you can see better. Um, on the 21st of July, 2022 the respondent threatened me on tiktok again i thought the first one was 20 the 22nd i mean the 21st anyway the respondent threatened me via tiktok again he said come out of hiding i'm going to bring you down i repeatedly block his accounts but he creates a new one every time I believe that this was the respondent as he was posting the same images. So at this point, it sounds like he didn't know for 100% sure that that was Love Day. Um, but he's appealing to the fact that it is likely. Prior to this, in early July 2022, the respondent physically abused me. He followed my car and dragged me out of it when I stopped. He kicked me and punched me repeatedly. I was scared for my life. He has continued to harass me on social media. The worst incident occurred in early July 2022. I noticed on my CCTV that an individual was stood listening through my door. When they eventually left, I went to my car and drove away. I arrived to a set of traffic lights and the respondent appeared. He started kicking and banging on the car. He then grabbed me through the window and pulled me out of my car. He said, I told you I'd find you. I don't, like, if he was in a relationship with Flo and he was at his door of his house and he already knew where he was, it's not like you would have to look for him. Um, but yeah, I told you I would find you. He then kicked me and punched me repeatedly for around 10 minutes. So he flew was assaulted on a main road for 10 minutes and there was no police involved or passerbyers or anything like that. I eventually managed to get into my car and escape. I sustained bruising on my face and grazes all across my body where he dragged me through the window. I mean, I don't think Holly Stanley's capable of lifting flu through a window. I also sustained a broken nose. I contacted the police, but no further action was taken. I therefore seek urgent protection by the way of a non-molestation order. Now, if flu can prove that that incident was reported to the police, he was arrested, he got uh, NFA'd for it, then flew as a case. Here we go. Thank you, Love Day, for putting your address again here. And and not address, sorry, date of birth. Now because the date of birth is is significant because the date of birth is what was used at court to prove that he, cr he committed the crimes in 2015 against children. So it's just more evidence. I was born on, I mean, that's, I don't know where that date's gonna be. And that's new information for me. The respondent was born on the 15th of June, 1980. He resides at, whatever, he abuses alcohol, cocaine and cannabis. He is currently on probation and subject to an electronically monitored curfew in relation to drug-related offences. I think he was at the time. I think he was at the time of the application for this non-mol. Makes sense. The respondent and I... The respondent and I... 
were in a relationship between 2019 and February 2022. I set out below a brief history of the abuse. The statement is being prepared on short notice so the emergency order can be obtained. As such, it may not contain all the incidents that have occurred. I've tried to include the main incidences, but I seek... And let's find... That was saved as six, but it should have been there. That's it. But I seek permission to make further more detailed statement, if necessary, to support my application for any future court proceedings. Now that's standard. That's standard. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Fair play. My relationship with the respondent started well. The respondent's behaviour changed around three months into our relationship. The respondent became aggressive and violent. He would punch my dog, punch me, kick me and bite me whenever he got angry over something trivial. He became controlling. He told me when I was allowed on social media and what I could post. He did not allow me to speak to my mother unless the phone was on loudspeaker. You see, this is all very classic. Um, coercive control, abuse, obviously. Do you know what I mean? Obviously. Um, it's, it's, yeah. He installed a recording device on my phone so he could listen into my phone calls. He did not let me wear makeup. He said it looks awful and you don't want people to see you like that. He removed my makeup when I continued to wear it without his permission. Whenever we were out, I had to look down and if I looked at anyone, he would kick or punch me. He also verbally abused me. He would call me derogatory names such as slag, whore and paedophile. He also accused me of being unfaithful to him and being a compulsive liar. He called me a waste of space and told me no one liked me. This occurred daily and ruined my self-esteem. Now on paper, that looks like a very textbook sort of, you know, if you were to look up what abuse in a relationship were, a lot of those things would be given as examples of. Now that doesn't mean to say this hasn't happened, but it does tick a lot of boxes like that. I don't believe that you would be punched and kicked in public without it being noticed. Um, and things like that, like proving that somebody rec put a recording device on your phone, that's very difficult. Sorry. It's very different, difficult to not, not prove, but it's very difficult for that person to actually do that. Um, there are sneakier ways people have done things. I've read like court cases where people have enabled... Um, like find my phone apps on their partner's phones and stuff like that so they know where they are and shit like that um but yeah anyway let's continue so in early 2020 my dog urinated on my carpet i attempted to cover and clean it before the respondent arrived however he saw the mark and shouted at me he pushed me onto my side and punched my dog numerous times. I grabbed my dog to protect it and the respondent hit me repeatedly. He eventually left and went upstairs. I sustained black eyes and a swollen jaw. I was frightened by his erratic behaviour. One second. I've seen people getting punched and kicked in public and I've gone straight over to break it up. I don't care about my own safety. Well, this is it. Like... Even if somebody's not as confident as you, for example, to go and break a fight up or get involved in the fight, people usually, um, no, 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 there's a there's a fight going on over there, or approach a member of door staff or whatever else. Um, I grabbed my dog to protect it, and the respondent hit me repeatedly. He eventually left and went upstairs. I sustained black eyes and a swollen jaw i was frightened you see all these things broken jaws broken nose things like that you would need to go to the hospital so if you're making a if you're making a, 
a statement like that in a court order, one of my first things as a, as a solicitor defending would be, well, he said this has all happened, but where's the medical evidence? Where's the medical files? Where's photos of injuries? Where's anything like that? Um, stuff like this could be easily sort of disproved. Uh, so like I say, you never mention anything unless you have evidence of it. Um, once again, he says, I was frightened by his erratic behaviour. Later, the respondent apologised for his behaviour and blamed it on the alcohol and substances he had consumed that day. We did not speak about this incident again. The respondent became increasingly physically abusive following this. Almost every day he pushed me and kicked me. He threw my belongings all over my property. He slammed doors and punched walls. Once again, photos of walls, photos of damaged walls, like a photo, I know it sounds fucking stupid, but a photo of you next to the wall, like you can get a photo of a wall being punched through off Google, you prove that you're, you know what I mean, that it's, it's your house, it's your walls, things like that. Um, also, in abuse cases, it's not always the case, obviously, but in abuse cases, people don't tend to do things that leave marks and injuries. Um like punching and kicking, for example. A picture tells a thousand stories, they say. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. He threw my belongings all over my property. He slammed doors and punched walls and shouted in close proximity to my face. The verbal abuse also worsened. He told me, no one likes you. Saying that the verbal abuse worsened and then using an example of the verbal abuse that you've already sustained Nobody should be saying that sort of shit about people, but saying he called me, he's told me that nobody likes me, and then it got, pardon me, and then it got worse, and he told me that people don't like me. That's not an, in, you know what I mean? It hasn't escalated. You know, it's something else. And claimed that I was worldwide fraudster and a serial cheat. You say, well, that's it. You just get rid of that fucking other shit. When we spoke over the phone, he said, let's get into it. Uh, one second, I need a drink. I need a fucking drink with a percentage after this. Uh, I'm going to fucking get you and fucking talk to me, bitch. I did not call the police because whenever I did, the respondent... I say that's a contradiction. I don't... I did not call the police because whenever I did. So that means you did call the police. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, you, you can't, like... It was so careful. You, you, I'm surprised the solicitor actually submitted this to court with a contradiction like that. I did not call the police, but whenever I did, the respondent also called the police and told them I was lying. Why would the respondent be calling the police to say that you're lying if you didn't actually call the fucking police yourself? Like, it doesn't make sense. Um, he also frequently told me that he had contacts within the police that told him whenever I called. His derogatory comments caused my health to deplete. Uh, on the here we go on the 13th of July 2022 the respondent not he respondent come on the respondent posted on TikTok I want to pay a thousand pounds for someone to pay Adam a visit he then later stated actually I'll pay someone ten thousand pounds to pay Adam a visit. Now, Adam Page's Princess Flu. I am extremely terrified of the respondent posting similar comments to this on a daily basis. I believe that he's instructing other third parties to come and harass me. Um, you can't, like, like, once again, you have to have fucking evidence of that. And if Holly actually posted videos off, like, literally offering money for people to do shit, like, fucking thick 
Do you know what I mean? Like, it's ridiculous. Uh, the worst incident occurred. Love Dear said it on a live. All right, there we go. But you see, this is the difference, you see. He should have said, Flew should have said that it was said on a live, that it was said on a live, and it was said on a live at this date, this time. Do you know what I mean? Like, he said that he's posted a video, responded, posted on TikTok, and that's, like, things like that. If I was a defending solicitor, I'd pull that apart. Um... The worst incident occurred in July 2022. Well, if I was writing this statement, I'd put that as the last point because I wouldn't want to um, lower the severity of everything else by putting, this is the worst one. By the way, here's some other shit. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, the worst incident occurred, which makes it actually think that this is a court appointed solicitor because a court appointed solicitor has very little time so they'd sit down with a laptop and, and Adam would just this is what happened this is what happened and it'd be why some of these like point eleven, point twelve, or whatever have multiple things inside of them which really shouldn't um yeah that makes more sense the worst incident occurred in early july 2022 it seems like a lot happened in july the respondent physically abused me. He followed my car. You see, that's the same thing. He, that's the same incident. I would be asking as a defendant solicitor, is that two separate incidents or what? Uh, dragged me over when he stopped. He kicked and punched me repeatedly. I was scared for my life. And he's continued to harass me on social media. I like... That point 11 doesn't need to be in if it's the same fucking incident. It just doesn't need to be there. Um... Since this incident, the respondent has posted videos about me and my family repeatedly on social media. He's posted images of me, descriptions of my property, my mother's property and descriptions of my car. I believe that he is sharing my personal information on social media so that I will start talking to him again so that he will stop this behaviour. He has also called me a benefit fraudster and a paedophile. He has contacted my friends and family to ask for my whereabouts. He has also sent letters to my neighbours calling me a paedophile. He's also threatened me on numerous occasions via social media. Once again, these are all things that you have to prove. Some, if somebody's given your neighbour a letter saying that you're a paedophile, you need that letter. You need to submit that letter to the court. Um, same with all these videos. On the 20th of July, 2022. It seems like fucking July. It was all fucking booting off in July, wasn't it? On the 20th of July. Sorry, guys. On the 20th of July, 2022, the respondent threatened me via TikTok. I started a live stream and the respondent sent me a direct message saying you're going to die once again this needs to be submitted as evidence this needs to you know what i mean you can't like every point like as a defendant solicitor i'd say uh mr page point three thirteen 13 of your statement you said that my client had directly threatened you through a message saying that you're going to die could you please provide evidence of that and then if you couldn't provide evidence of any of these things you tear them apart you only have to have, like with this, because it's family court, it's not in front of a judge and a jury, well, sorry, it's not in front of a jury, it's a judge. Now the burden of proof is less in family court and it relies on the judge going, yeah, actually I believe that or I don't believe that. And with a statement like this, if there's nothing to back it up, I really, really be fucking surprised that the judge that wouldn't, challenge this statement um anyway point 14 on 21st of july 2022 the respondent threatened me via tiktok again he said come out of hiding i'm going to bring you down now he hasn't said if this is a video a live stream a message things like that are important most recently on the morning of the 24th of july 2022 the respondent instructed people on 
And I think this is the last bit, yeah. On TikTok to come to my property. Later that day, he arrived at my property unannounced. He was throwing objects at my home and ringing my buzzer repeatedly whilst demanding that I speak to him. So that's the same incident again. Like, I wouldn't have put that point in either. I would have added the date that he's then given to the other point. I need this order. Yeah, these, these are always like, you know, like standard sort of statements to why I need it. I need this order because I can no longer cope with the respondent's behaviour. It is severely impacting my mental health and well-being. I'm scared for my safety and I'm concerned what may happen if this order is not put in place to protect me. That's very well phrased and why I think it's a solicitor who's obviously written this. Because a statement like that, when a judge reads it, goes, you know, if I don't put this in place and fucking something happens, people are going to wonder why I didn't. You know, it makes the judge think that. Uh, I respectively ask the court to make a non molestation order. Right? That I respectfully ask this order to be made on an urgent, without notice basis. I need this order guaranteed for my own safety. The respondent's behaviour is very unpredictable and I do not know what he is capable of doing. I believe that this order is not made without notice to the respondent. If this order is not made to the note... Sorry, Jesus Christ. I believe if this order is not made without notice to the respondent and the respondent were put on notice of such proceedings... This will provoke him and he would try to stop me from making the application. Therefore, I request the, the court to make the non molestation order without notice. Um, and you can see that that's been put in there on the... Oh Jesus, look at his signature. Fuck me. It's been put in on that date which is obviously pretty close to all of these sort of accusational time period that Flew's given. Um, yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know, like, what do you guys think over on YouTube? What do you guys think over on Twitch? Do you think Adam Page is telling the truth here or is the lies? Um, I think there's a smittering of bullshit uh, throughout the whole thing. I do, however, believe that Adam Page and Stephen Loveday were in a relationship at some point. I really do. Um, I really, really fucking do. And I think that because I've seen text messages between Loveday and somebody else where they say that Flew's gone to the police because Flew is claiming that Love Day has shown him images of a child or something like that, and that that's what's caused all of this fallout. Now, Flu may have had disclosed to him by Love Day that he is a paedophile, and but not had any evidence to back it up. Um, so he's done everything he can to basically, you know, try to try to get him, try to get him in some way. But yeah, my, my good feeling, guys, is that they were definitely in a relationship. You don't get a non-molestation order granted. You just fucking wouldn't. Like, first thing, first thing you would do is challenge and say, if I was in a relationship with you, fucking prove it. Like, a solicitor wouldn't entertain this. A judge wouldn't entertain it. Nobody would entertain it at all unless there was proof that there was a relationship and a relationship had taken place. It's it just that nah, it wouldn't. Right, anyway, guys, that's that's it for the stream over on Twitch. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit like and follow. It really helps the channel, um, especially with pushing out awareness. You can also share this video on other social media platforms as well. That definitely helps. But I'm going to go and I'm going to fuckity fuck off and try and digest what I've just read. Peace.